What is the conviction rate for perpetrators of gender-based violence? Suffice to say, the numbers are quite low. Over the years, there have been more reoccurring cases of gender-based violence. Everyone has the right to feel safe and secure, especially for women who have been put down constantly by cultural and social beliefs. But where this is absent, people's ability to function in society is compromised. In every place where there is unrest in this continent, someone is facing sexual and gender-based violence. But women are mostly affected, and we know the reason for this. In some communities in northern Nigeria, women are constantly raped and defiled by terrorists and even community members. And then in Ethiopia, where there was recently a war, the women of Tigray were being raped as forms of warfare. A lot of these people are women. This means they are even more vulnerable to SGBV from state actors, from non-state actors. So SGBV is also a power thing. That means to effectively combat it, we also need to achieve gender parity, right? Now, to achieve gender parity, it means we have to empower women. We have to empower them economically, politically, domestically, in basically every way possible. We all know women who have faced who have suffered through gender-based violence. A 2021 UN Women report revealed that 48% of Nigerian women have experienced at least one form of violence but do not get the chance to speak up. And when they do speak up, more often than not, they're silenced by authorities, families, the institutions that are meant to protect them. SDBV has been largely reported as a public health risk. Yet, it has been ignored. It should be considered a pandemic. Its impacts are so grave that the world should join hands to tackle it the same way we united to address COVID-19, HIV and AIDS, and other outbreaks. The need for justice cannot be overemphasized in the fight against sexual and gender-based violence. It's also important to note that SGBV is not specific to a particular age group, to a particular demographic, or even gender. Of course, it is more prominent amongst women, amongst children, amongst displaced persons. But essentially, it is a human problem. There should be more awareness about sexual and gender-based violence. We have to start speaking up for one another. We have to start protecting each other. And no amount of compensation can heal the wounds that have been inflicted upon this women. But one thing that people don't really highlight is things like psychological and emotional abuse, whereby women, sometimes even in their domestic households or even at work, they are told that they are not enough, they are told that they can't do things because they are women, which then impacts their lives. I think that is a form of sexual SGBV that is not really talked about, and I think we should open the conversation towards that. But the apprehension of perpetrators is a stance.